All right, um, you can open to Romans chapter one. And so um, at this point, I want to, uh, as I mentioned last week, I want to take some time to try to go carefully and uh, as thoroughly as possible over the uh, all the verses and passages in Paul's epistles that, that I'm aware of that might affect our thinking about the timing of the coming of Christ. And so um, I went back and forth kind of on how to approach this, but I my plan at this point is to start in Romans chapter one, the first epistle or the first chapter that we come to written by Paul, and then just go through Paul's epistles in, in order. And uh, again, try to at least briefly comment on any verses or passages that relate to this topic. And then I also want to uh, carefully consider all of the arguments that I'm aware of um, that are used either for or against a certain viewpoint and uh, try to see the validity of those arguments. So, uh, and then of course, in doing this, we will learn a lot more than just things about the timing. Uh, we'll learn a lot, a lot about the coming of Christ. So I'd like to uh, start then in uh, I think the first relevant verse for this topic uh, in Paul's epistles, and that is Romans chapter 1 and verse 18. So Romans 1, 18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unright unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So Paul says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Um, and if you look in a dictionary, wrath is uh, violent anger and indignation. And both of those words are also used a number of times in the word of God, uh, where it speaks about God's anger and God's indignation. And uh, some, I've heard a number of people over the years mistakenly claim that uh, there's a difference between the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament. Um, and I, I've heard many times people say the God of the Old Testament is more wrathful, but the God of the New Testament is more about grace and love. But I always think they've never read the New Testament if they say that, because the New Testament is uh, has many, many verses about the wrath of God, in, including in Paul's epistles, as we see here in Romans 1.18. And so the we're not going to spend a long time on this verse, but the topic of the wrath of God, uh, I, I believe, becomes very important when we're studying the 70th week and, and the, the coming of Christ, including the timing of his coming. So notice in Romans 1.18, um, this verse does not say that God's anger is now poured out upon the earth it says that it's revealed from heaven. So the, the world today in the dispensation of the grace of God is not experiencing God's anger. And any sort of teaching, and there's a lot of it, any sort of teaching that um, by Christians that would lead you to believe that God is angry today and responding in any way whatsoever today in anger that's not true, that's, that's a false teaching. So God's, God's wrath is revealed at this time, as, as it says in Romans 1.18, and it's revealed in the scriptures. Uh, and then Paul says it's revealed from heaven. So Jesus Christ, of course, spoke to Paul from heaven and, uh, and then Paul wrote this revelation in his epistles and again, uh, a fair amount of the revelation does concern the wrath of God. That's an important part of, of the revelation given to Paul. And so again, Paul has written that for us in the epistles. And so it will be important for us to understand as we move along when, when God's wrath will be poured out and where it will be poured out and upon whom it will be poured out. Um, and just one more comment before we move on from this verse. When Paul talks in Romans chapter 1 and verse 18 about the wrath of God, 
the wrath of God is spoken of a great deal in the Old Testament. And the wrath of God that Paul speaks about here in Romans 1.18 is it's not a different wrath of God. It's the same wrath of God that's spoken of many times in the Old Testament. So just take note of that, and, and uh, I believe that will become important later. Okay, then turn to chapter 2 in Romans. Chapter 2, and Jean Grosser, do you read verse 5? Romans 2, 5. But after thy hardness and impenitent, impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Okay, so this verse speaks of the day of wrath. So there is a day in this verse, and, and we will see other places in the word of God. There is a day that is called the day of wrath. And then also you see in chapter 2 and verse 5, it's associated with the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Turn back to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, and RJ, would you read verse 31? They may not be able to read. So uh, let me read Acts chapter 17, verse 31 says, because he hath appointed a day, so notice again, a day, in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. So again, this verse speaks of a day in which judgment will take place. Um, and notice in this verse, it speaks about the resurrection of Christ, of course, for those of us who are saved, the resurrection of Christ is a wonderful, joyous teaching. But you can see in this verse, for the unsaved, it's a terrible thing. Um, because the fact that he's raised from the dead means that he can be the judge in this day that's appointed. Um, so then uh, turn to the book of Job. So the, the day of wrath, again, that Paul speaks of in Romans 2, is mentioned many times in the scriptures. And so I want to, uh, the rest of our time today, just fairly quickly look at a number of places where we see this day mentioned. Um, we won't by any means look at all of them, just a small sampling, really, um, and take note of, of some of the things. So... The first time that we find the term day of wrath is in the book of Job, chapter 20. And Dennis, would you read Job chapter 20 and verse 28? Job 20, 28. The increase of his house shall depart and his goods shall flow away in the day of his wrath. Notice the term, the day of his wrath. And again, this is the first time that we find this term in the scriptures. And so um, I also want to just quickly notice the context of this a bit. So um, Dennis just read verse 28, and look at verse 27. Whom I shall see for myself and mine. I, what's the wrong chapter there? Uh, yeah, verse 27. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity and the earth shall rise up against him. And then Dennis read verse 28. Then verse 29. This is the portion of a wicked man from God and the heritage appointed unto him. Um, and notice as Dennis read in verse 28, his goods shall flow away in the day of his wrath. So the, the context of the first mention here of the day of his wrath has to do with judging the riches of men. And then look in chapter 21 in Job, chapter 21, and uh, Richard, would you read verse 30? Okay, 
21 verse 30. That the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction, they shall fall forth to the day of wrath. Okay, and so it speaks here of the wicked being judged in the day of wrath. All right, then turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, and Dick, would you read verse 4, Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 4. Okay, <clears throat> Proverbs 11, 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Okay, so uh, here again it mentions the day of wrath. And notice once again, it says riches profit not in the day of wrath. So again, we see that connection of riches being judged in the day of wrath. All right, then Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10 and Meg, would you read verse three? Isaiah chapter 10, verse three. Isaiah 10, three. And what will ye do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which shall come from afar to whom will ye flee for help, and where will ye leave your glory? Okay, so most of the verses that we will look at tonight um, have the phrase day of wrath or day of his wrath, but there are many, many other verses that don't have that specific term, but that's what they're talking about. And so here in verse three, it talks about the day of visitation. And it warns in this verse that it will be desolation. And the, the warning here, um, if you look back in verse two and verse four, just glance at those verses, the warning here is specifically regarding those who oppress the needy and the poor and the widows and the fatherless. So again, it's kind of in that same context of the rich oppressing some, again, the needy and the poor and so forth. All right, then uh, Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah 13, and would Dan or Laura read verse 13? So Isaiah 13, 13. Isaiah 13 squared. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of their her place in the uh, wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Okay, so this mentions the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. And uh, the, if you just quickly look at the context here in verse 11, it says, and I will punish the world for their evil. So this is in the context of including the world. And then also in verse 13, Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place. So the context here includes the seemingly the entire earth and the entire world. All right, then uh, chapter 22 in Isaiah. Isaiah 22 and Sharon, would you read verse 5? Twenty-two-five. For it is a day of trouble, and of treading down, and of perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls, and of crying to the mountains. All right. So this speaks of a day of trouble, and of treading down, and the focus in this passage. If you look at verse four. Uh, he says, therefore said I, look away from me, I will weep bitterly, uh, labor not to comfort me because of the spoiling of the daughter of my people. So the context here is on Israel, my people. Then let's go to the book of Lamentations. So right after the book of Jeremiah, Lamentations, and would Bonsinger Joyce read chapter 2 and verse 1? Lamentations. 
covered the top of Zion with a cloud in his anger and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. Okay, so this verse speaks of the day of his anger. And, and clearly this is focused on Israel. You see in verse one, the beauty of Israel. And then uh, if you go on verse two, the Lord hath swallowed up all the habitations of Jacob and hath not pitied. He hath thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He hath brought them down to the ground. He hath polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. He hath cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He hath drawn back his right hand from before the enemy, and he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire, which devoureth round about. All right, and then let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 7. And uh, in Ezekiel chapter 7, would Tim or Jean read verse 19? Hey, Ezekiel 7, 19, almost there. All right. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. All right. So... This verse speaks of the day of the wrath of the Lord. And notice once again, the warning that riches will not save in that day. Then let's go to the book of Joel. Joel chapter two. And excuse me, in uh, Joel chapter two, Gabrielle, would you read verse two? So Joel chapter two, verse two. Go to two, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more accurate, even to the years of many generations. Okay, so this, this verse speaks of a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. And then uh, if we look at the context here a little more, chapter 2 and verse 1 says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. So we can see where, the, where this is located again. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. So again, verse 1 says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. So Notice here the trumpet and the alarm, and uh, and also again it's clearly focused on Israel. Um, and so in verse one, Joel says that the day of the Lord is nigh at hand, and yet it's a long time since Joel wrote this, and the day of the Lord still has not come. So. Uh, we, we've already talked about the doctrine of the imminent coming, so I won't spend a long time on that. But clearly when Joel says in verse 1, it is nigh at hand, that certainly does not mean that it's imminent. Because, again, it still, ha it still hasn't come after all these hundreds of years. And then um, look at verse 3 in Joel 2. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as a garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth a stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. So again, notice that clearly the focus here is on the land of Israel. And notice also the emphasis in a fire. Um, so in verses three through five, you have a fire devoureth, a flame burneth, a flame of fire that devoureth a stubble. And so um, 
So a lot of this today, we're just taking note of certain things uh, about the day of wrath, and then we'll talk more about it as we move on. But uh, let's then go to Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 1. So not, not Zechariah, but Zephaniah. And uh, Dominic, would you read Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 15? Zephaniah 1 verse 15. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Okay, so the day of wrath is again mentioned here in verse 15. And then it also describes this as a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Um, and then in, uh, in the previous verse, in verse 14, it says, the great day of the Lord is near, it is near and hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. So verse 14 speaks of the great day of the Lord. And uh, notice in verse 14 that Zephaniah says that this day is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. So, but again, the great day of the Lord still hasn't come. So um, we should keep in mind some of this terminology used in Joel and here in Zephaniah and other places where it speaks about the day of wrath or the great day of the Lord. And it talks about it being nigh or being near. And yet clearly that, it can't mean that it's imminent because hundreds and hundreds of years have passed and it still hasn't come. Um, and then uh, notice also in verse 14 that there's, um, there's the voice of the day of the Lord. And so keep that in mind, the, the voice of the day of the Lord. And then um, also before we move on from this, uh, in verse 16, so Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 16, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. So no, notice it's a day of the trumpet and uh, it's a day of alarm. And we've seen both of those words earlier, trumpet and alarm. And then verse 17, and I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. So um, God is going to bring distress upon men in that day. And then verse 18, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. So in verse 18, it's the day of the Lord's wrath. And you can see that the wrath in this passage is focused on Jerusalem and the land of Israel. Um, if you look back in verse 12, it says, and it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem. And then uh, verse 18, Again, you see that it's focused on the land of Israel. And so this day that's spoken of in this passage, this day of wrath is clearly the second coming of Christ. All right, then uh, in Zephaniah, uh, Akun, would you read chapter 2 and verse 2? Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the shaft, before the I'm fierce... Sorry. Um, um, you said Zephaniah 2.2, that's what she was reading. Did you that? Um, no, I don't think so. Sorry. Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 2. Okay, Zephaniah chapter 2. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, you're, yeah, you're, you were correct. Um, I actually meant verse 3, you were correct. I should okay. have said verse 3. Verse 3, okay. Seek ye the Lord 
all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness, it may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. All right, so verse 3 mentions the day of the Lord's anger. Um, and so th this says that the, uh, if you go back up, then go back up to verse 2. Before the decree bring forth, bef uh, before the day passes the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. So uh, it also in, in verse 2 speaks of the Lord's fierce anger that will come upon you in this day. And the, the context here is, again, quite clearly and narrowly dealing with Israel. If you look at uh, chapter 2, verse 1, gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation, not desired. So, again, clearly focusing on the nation of Israel. Um, and then, as we saw in verse 3, it's, again, called the day of the Lord's anger. All right, then turn to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, and Han Hui, would you read verse 2? Malachi chapter 3, verse 2. But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. Okay, so this verse warns about the day of his coming. Um, and uh, if you uh, look at verse 1 in Malachi 3, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. So notice here, that the Lord shall suddenly come to his temple. And clearly that's referring to the temple in Jerusalem. So again, the geographical location of this passage is again, quite narrow. And then um, notice as, as Han Hui read verse two, notice the mention there of refiner's fire. So there again, you have the fire. And then verse three, and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So notice that he will purify the sons of Levi. So again, clearly focused on Israel. And then verse four, then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. So the mention there of Judah and Jerusalem. All right, then, uh, so there are many other Old Testament verses we could look at, but we will leave that there and then not uh, turn to Matthew chapter 16. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 16, and uh, would someone at the Lewandowski's read verse 27, Matthew 16, verse 27. I can get to it first. Uh, I have it. Okay. Uh, for the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Okay, so so the the wrath, this wrath, this righteous judgment of God that we've been reading about, again, takes place at the second coming of Christ. And so um, that's the context here of Matthew 16, 27. Um, if you, uh, so it says in verse 27, for the son of man shall come. So clearly we can see what it's talking about there. Um, and so the warning is, if you go back up a verse earlier, verse 26, he says, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So the warning is that when the Son of Man comes, there will be a day of judgment in which some people will lose their soul. Um, and so this, this coming, he says in verse 27, 
will be in the glory of his father with his angels. And then uh, turn, we're going, going to go back to the Old Testament for a moment. Go back to Daniel chapter 7. And it speaks here about this same coming. Daniel chapter 7. And Pakinatan, would you read verses 12 through 14? So Daniel chapter 7, verses 12 through 14. Concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion take away, taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season of time. I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient day, and they brought him. And where there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom of Ancient language to serve him. His dominion is the everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom and that shall not be destroyed. Okay, so this this coming, as we read in uh, in Matthew, he talks about Christ coming in the glory of his Father with his angels. So this is the same coming um, here in Daniel chapter seven. And it says the son of man comes with the clouds of heaven and he's given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages should serve him. Okay, then let's go to second Peter chapter two. And again, a lot of what we're doing today is just looking at some verses uh, rather briefly about this day of wrath. And, uh, and getting some information that we will find useful later. So, Second Peter chapter two, and George, would you read verse nine? Okay, George may not be able to read. So, let me read Second Peter chapter two and verse nine. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So Peter here speaks of the day of judgment. Uh, and he says, in that day, the unjust will be punished. And then let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6, and Sally, would you read verse 17? And Sally also maybe. Sorry, I don't have my Bible with me. I'm at somebody else's house. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. No problem. All right. So Revelation chapter 6 and verse 17. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So this verse speaks of the great day of his wrath. Um, and if we back up a little bit, uh, just get a little more information about this day of wrath. Uh, back up to verse 15. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men, so notice the, the rich men, and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. And so this is when men will hide themselves from uh, from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. Um, so before we, uh, so we're, we're going to wrap it up there for today. Um, but before we move on from, so we looked at Romans 118 and Romans 25 today. Um, so I want to point out um, again that many of these Old Testament passages that we read about the day of wrath focus on Israel. But yet when Paul talks in Romans 1.18 and Romans 2.5 about the wrath of God and the day of wrath, he's clearly 
talking about much more than just wrath coming upon Israel. Um, but it's the same, as I mentioned in Romans 1.18, it's the, the, when Paul says, speaks of the wrath of God in Romans 1.18, it's the same wrath of God that's in the Old Testament. It's not some different wrath of God that's, that's newly revealed to Paul. It's the same wrath of God. And also when he speaks about the day of wrath in Romans 2, 5, that again, that's the day of wrath spoken of many times in the Old Testament. It's again, it's not some new day of wrath that is first revealed to Paul. So Paul, now Paul may give some new or additional information about the wrath of God and the day of wrath, but it's the same wrath and it's the same day of wrath spoken of in the Old Testament. All right, let's uh, leave it there for today. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Dan. Good night, everyone. Good night, Meg.